Hi there, everybody. Welcome. We're going to be talking about what it was like at the Anime Expo that we all attended just this past weekend. And we kind of like went behind the scenes and everything. We saw all sorts of really cool stuff. We got to meet up with people from Square Enix, people from Nice America, people from Xseed and Marvelous, Namco Bandai, all sorts of stuff, as well as you, the fans. I was only there for one day. However, Brandon at Just the Gems and Emily at Orbalology were there for multiple days, so they have a lot more to say about it than I do. Um, I would like to go ahead and begin with Emily. Ladies first, go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell us about your experience at the Anime Expo on your first day whenever you got there. Hi, um, I'm Emily from Orbalology, and on YouTube I like to talk about collecting, especially JRPGs. And I went all four days for Anime Expo and had a blast. Um, I was attending more just as an individual rather than a YouTuber. Um, so I, was, I could maybe give a slightly different perspective than these two, especially on the day of their panel. Um, but I arrived on Thursday and it was so wild. Um, the floors and the multiple rooms everything was in, um, it was a sight to see. And um, the first panel I went to was actually the East 10 one. Um, and I was a little worried about the line situation because I've heard Anime Expo is the line con. So I actually went pretty early to make sure I would sit in front. Um, and that's when Brandon actually met me and we had a lot of fun over the weekend. And then um, I got to meet up with David on Saturday when he was here. And so uh, we'll talk more about, I think all the different days and um, all the all the fun things that went on. Yeah, no kidding. So you guys met up at the Ease 10 panel, correct? Yes. Right. Yes. How was that panel? Uh, we were in the front row, which was pretty amazing, yeah. especially when the a best condo seats in the house. <laughs> was like right there, um, like maybe yeah. an arm's length away from me, just sitting there. You could have kicked this chair if you if you were that kind of person. You could have just kicked this oh, chair. Could've. Oh, could've. You would. <laughs> it was just right there, um, and he was playing. Um, the demo for East 10, which incorporated some sort of boss battle. Um, and it was kind of funny because there was a point where he had to pause and uh, take some potions because <laughs> he was about to die. <laughs> so the crowd was really into it, uh, the whole the whole thing. Good. But yeah, I was kind of a little bit incognito. I kind of just wore all black and I told Brandon, I'm in the front row, all black, come meet me. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. <laughs> did Baseball anybody... cap pulled low. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so whenever you were incognito, did anybody like actually come up to you? Did anybody recognize you? No. No, no one actually um, recognized me except for the few days I went to the other Falcon related panels, mm -hmm. and that's when I was cosplaying as a Bright. Yeah. Yeah. So you were already kind of standing out as it was, and then people yeah. would be like, "Oh, there's a Oh, yeah. wait, it's Orbalology, You know. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think everyone recognized me, which is fine. Like, I'm not that big of a YouTuber, but I had a few people come up to me and said they enjoyed my videos, which was really nice to hear. Don't sell yeah. yourself short. You're perfectly, perfectly <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay. So, Brandon, when did you get there? So, yeah, I wish I could have gotten there earlier, um, but I flew in Thursday afternoon. And um, I mean, it's like, a, you know, it's like a four hour flight. So it's it's a little bit of a trek. But yeah, by the time I got there, I checked into the hotel and made my way over. And then I had to meet up with the NIS America rep because they hadn't sent me my badge ahead of time. They had it for me there and they wanted me to come to some back entrance. And I got to this place and it is I don't know if you all it's watching enormous. This haven't been it's there. Huge. It is so big it's like multiple Huge. buildings it's like multiple city blocks in size and there are i think they said like a hundred thousand people were there okay. that like just crazy like I, I so i was like calling the nis rep like i like i don't know where i am i i see a <laughs> I see like a del taco or you know like i'm just <laughs> trying to point out landmarks there's the crypto.com arena you know um, so I met up with the, the rep and then he was going to the East 10 panel anyway. So he kind of guided me through the back hallways. Um, and then, yeah, then I found Emily. She was gracious enough to save me a seat. So we were right up front and yeah, I mean, it's my first real con panel experience of this kind anyway. And it was, it was a lot of fun. It was super cool. Great way to start the evening. I have great way to, to start ask, the weekend off because yeah. I saw that there were bonuses of these acrylic stands that you could get if you were the first one in line and it was signed by Kondo himself. Did you get them? I think so, it was only... Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, Kondo had three different signings where you had to basically 
pre-order your ticket and I missed the window for that unfortunately. Um, but the two Falcom relate the Trails panels were giving out those uh, exclusive acrylic stands, which was pretty cool. So were you able to um, get And them? then also on the last panel, um, the NIS America, they had a, their own booth selling merchandise. Most of it was stuff available online, but they um, added some new acrylic standees there of the individual characters. And so for the last panel on Friday that Brandon and I went to, um, if you were selected to answer a question, um, Kondo would sign those standees for you, which was pretty cool. But uh, unfortunately, neither of us were selected no! <laughs> to answer or oh, ask a question. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so the I, questions are fun of who were selected. Were they? So, so, so yeah, what yeah. was the second panel that y'all went to? The second one was the, the daybreak okay. panel. Mm -hmm. That like was the, the next day the, on Friday. Right, yeah. And I was looking for Brandon in line because this time he saved a spot for me. And my friend also <laughs> um, came uh, with me that day. Um, she's not really into video games, but she was there for the people watching. And she, she had a good time. I met her. But, she's um, super sweet. Yeah. She, she's, she's really nice. She's my childhood yeah, friend. Yeah, Ellie's great. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I was basically, Brandon's like, I'm standing here. It's really hot out. I'm the man with the uh, yellow umbrella. So we tried to look for him. <laughs> and the line situation was kind of crazy. I, I had a difficult time actually finding where that line was. But eventually we got there and um, were able to kind of squeeze in there and wait, I think, another 40 minutes to get into the room. Because that was what the one mm. I think we we're really nervous about, how many how limited the seating was. And, and if we were going to so get one of those um, like exclusive acrylic degrees. stands. So hot. Yeah, it was, <laughs> so, it was hot. so hot. Yeah, yeah was, the, I think it was concrete, the third day. It's awful. Yeah. The third day, Emily, the third day in the morning, Emily texted me the UV index. She's like, look out. Like, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's nuclear. Outside. Wear sunscreen, which you didn't <laughs> do. It's and a good thing you all had that umbrella. Like, man. Yeah, I did have the umbrella. So on yeah. Thursday, you guys just went to that one panel, correct? The East 10 panel, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, um, by the Friday. time that was done, everything mostly was closed. Like yeah. some of the exhibitions were still open, but. We did some demos um, for okay. the NAS America mm -hmm. booth, but that was the last thing that was, I think, open officially. Got gotcha. you. So then on Friday, you to only went to the Daybreak 2 demo, was that correct? Or the, or, oh, sorry, no, we did two panels on Friday. Two they had panels on um, so two trails the related panel? panels. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the second panel was just Kondo talking about the trail series, and that's where he was asked, um, answering questions from the audience and giving out those side uh, acrylic stamps. Gotcha. Yeah. So that one was fun, just kind of hearing him, little anecdotes about um, him working on the trail series, what characters um, were kind of inspired by people he, he knows in real life, <laughs> those sort of mm -hmm. things. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, very good, very good, very good. So, so after that, so you guys were hanging around for two days and everything. Did you guys like go out to eat with each other or hang out afterwards or anything? Tell me about that. I want to hear all about it. Yeah. So the first night we just ate at a place right there. What was it called? Lucky Dog. Uh, the Lazy Lucky dog. dog. I think it's a chain. Lazy Dog. But... Lazy Dog. That's good. Um, okay. Yeah, and I ate like a mountain of ribs. I hadn't eaten all day. Yum. I hadn't eaten right. zero food all day, and then I just ate a mountain of ribs. And I don't. I don't know, guys. I don't recommend it. Um, not a good strategy for anything. Um, I, I was only snacking second... during the day. <laughs> and then a big burger. <laughs> but then the second day we went to um, Little Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Is that, that, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's called Little um, Tokyo. Um, it's just um, yeah. on the Metro line, which is the train kind of subway station. It's above ground in LA. It's just a couple stops away from where the convention center was. And so um, a lot of other people I saw kind of dressed up. So they were also coming from Anime Expo, just walking around. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cute little area if you're ever down there. Yeah. Oh, wait, Little Tokyo. Isn't that like a little mall or something? And there's like a food court inside of it. And there's there Japanese is. Stuff. There are a couple been malls. There it's so um, yeah. cute. It's yeah. really cute. Yeah. yeah. I think that they had like a sushi conveyor belt or something restaurant. And I went there uh, one time yeah. and I was able to, and they charge you based upon the color of the plate. I want to say you take the, the plate you pick. Yeah, right? it's just like in Japan. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of those uh, yeah. conveyor belt places. I, I so. remember going there a couple it's of fun. months back whenever I was in LA earlier. Interesting. Okay. So that's what y'all did on Thursday and Friday. So then Saturday rolls around. This is whenever I flew in and mm -hmm. my flight was early in the morning. I rolled out of bed at six o'clock in the morning. I was on my flight. I landed and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. All I knew was that I was on a time crunch. So um, <laughs> I had emails from my contact at Nice America and he was like, David, when are you landing? 
Uh, when can you be here? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm stuck in delay traffic. You know, the flight could be delayed. I don't really know what's going on. So my flight lands at like 1030 and I need to be in this panel at 245. So I have a four hour window to get there. So first things first, I get off the plane, I'm running out, and I'm like, where's the lift? Where's the Uber? I have no idea. I'm at Terminal 3. If you've ever been to LAX, it is a nightmare. There's eight different terminals. All of them are separated, and there's a huge parking lot connecting everything. There's no signage telling you where to go or what to do or anything. So I go ahead and I summon my lift, and I don't really know where to go, but I see signs saying, like, lift this way. But there's other people waiting there for a lift. So I'm like, I don't really know what's good, what's going on. I asked this lady next to me. She had no clue what the hell was going on either. So <laughs> so eventually I see people, younger people, walking far away. And I'm like, these young people know what's going on. Not middle-aged Sally over here. So I follow <laughs> the young people. And they're like, walking forever. And then I finally see a sign that says, lift Uber. And then like it was called like LA Taxi or something. Mm -hmm. This way. And I'm following this. I'm like, where am I going? I had to walk from Terminal 3. Terminal 2 to Terminal 1, across the street into a brand new, different parking lot just to catch my Uber. But, oh, oh mm -hmm. no, no, no. I was in the Uber spot, but then whenever I told the Lyft driver that I was in the Uber spot, he goes, no, that's the Uber spot, not the Lyft spot. I'm like, well, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> so I, I had to call the Uber, the Lyft guy. He tells me where to go. I'm running, literally soaking, dripping wet in sweat. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a nightmare. Literally, I ran from Terminal 3 all the way to this lift thing, carrying my luggage, carrying my bags, carrying everything. Finally, I get in the lift. 20 minutes to get to the Biltmore Hotel. Yes. The Biltmore. The Biltmore. That's fancy. Yeah. It's so fancy. <laughs> I went to the lobby. So <laughs> Too bad I only spent all of 10 minutes at the Biltmore. So, <laughs> so I go to the Biltmore, I check in, and the front desk clerk, because I was very smart, and I asked the NISA person, I'm like, how am I going to get this badge? And they were like, I don't know what to do. And I said, why don't you leave it with the front desk clerk and they can give it to me. And he's like, oh, what a great good idea. Call, and I'm like, no, no kidding, genius. So he leaves it with the front <laughs> desk clerk. I pick up my badge there. I run upstairs to the room just to drop off my luggage. And um, because I was going to spend the night. I was going to spend the night and all that, but that didn't happen. Yeah, things change of plans. So there was a whole, my day was a mess. So anyway, um, I run upstairs, drop off my luggage, run downstairs. But at this point, it's like noon. And I'm like, shit, I got like two hours. I got I to gotta get in here. So I go outside. I actually text Brandon at this time. I'm like, where's the shuttle place? And he goes, don't take the shuttle. It took me like an hour <laughs> to get on the shuttle. He had, he had the shuttle nightmare story. And I'm like, oh, screw this. So I order yet another lift. And he takes me over to the Enemy Expo. It took 10 minutes to get there. I get there. And of course, the traffic around the Enemy Expo was insane. So I jump out of the lift before the lift is supposed to stop because I'm just like, I'm just going to walk the rest of this. This is crazy. So I walk into the Enemy Expo and I get to go in the industry line and walk the past industry. all the other trash next to me. So. <laughs> Could it be? Yeah, I, I feel VIPs so only. <laughs> I felt so important. So I'm going through, and then I, I get in there, and I walk in. The place is massive, massive. I look downstairs. There's a billion people. I look over to the right. There's a billion people. But I also see on the right-hand side, um, I don't know, signage for video games and things like that. Square Enix or Namco Bandai, XC. These are the things. So I'm like, oh, well, that's got to be where Anissa is. It's got to be in there. So I'll go in there, walking around. A good half an hour, walking around. Finally, I text Brandon and Emily. I'm like, where is Nisa? I can't find it anywhere. And um, I have to like, wait there. We'll meet you. And I'm like, I'm at the Square Enix booth. So I hung out at the Square Enix booth, met some really cool fans. They were, they all recognized me. And I'm like, well, of course, at the Square Enix booth, of course, they're going to recognize me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I stand there and I'm standing there for like forever. And then finally, Emily comes and then Brandon comes and they take me over to the Nice booth where I had to play the Reynatus demo and I got to play the Ease 10 demo coming out as well. A lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And we got to hang out. And thankfully, I had plenty of time. I think I had a good hour and a half or so before the panel actually started. So we kind of went shopping, went to Artist's Alley. I grabbed a bite to eat, all that kind of stuff. Brandon met up with his wife. I remember that. Y'all went out to eat mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. Yeah, good. So then the panel comes around. I didn't know what to do. 
Like, nobody tells me. So you would think, you would think that if you're doing this panel and a big company invites you out, that it's very organized and it's, uh, you know, er everything is just so. It was not just so. <laughs> they did send us a script and I went through my script and I highlighted my script and I took notes on my script. But where did I leave Very my prepared. script? I left it in the Biltmore. <laughs> Didn't have my script. So. <laughs> mm. Well, so, as an um, audience member of your panel, I, I couldn't tell anything was wrong. I thought you guys were pretty seamless. Awesome. That's good Glad to hear. To hear that. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, that is good to hear because I was flying by the seat of my pants. So. <laughs> I thought, yeah, you guys had like a practice round or something. Like you guys seemed like you're just on top of everything. <laughs> No, like they, they called it a rehearsal ahead of time. Like, so we got yeah. there at like 2.45 mm -hmm. and they said, okay, we're going to do the rehearsal. But really that was just like, here's the script again. Anybody Damn have man. any questions? <laughs> you sit here, you sit here, you sit here. Uh -huh. Does your mic work? And that was kind of it. Like yeah. it was, oh, there was not really okay. a ton of preparation. Yeah, was, uh, I guess they wanted some hour, organic too. discussions, you know? Which right, I, I yeah, felt I like mean, it was felt all, very organic. Yeah, because like we're all, like we all know what we're talking about. Like not to toot our horn or whatever but like we yeah, know yeah. the subject so yeah. like it's not it's not something yeah. we need to yeah, study for experts. or whatever it's not like right. we're going up there and talking about like particle physics or anything you know <laughs> right yeah. yeah you were just talking about our hobbies so so yeah i, mm -hmm. I got a, we all got new scripts because none of us actually had our scripts i wasn't the only one who left no. my script in the hotel room like a moron <laughs> so well, i just had it on my phone i wasn't yeah <laughs> So, um, so we're in there. I said hello to Cam. He was another um, person who was presenting with us, part of the panel as well. A very nice person. Um, it was really good to meet him. I've met Brandon before, so we had, um, you know, some history together. He's come into Vegas, so we knew each other. And Emily, it's my first time meeting you as well. Super sweet. So the panel starts, and it was a lot of just questions about. Um, you would think that it'd be mostly about like, you know. Nice America stuff. And mm -hmm. it really kind of wasn't. Yeah, that <laughs> surprised me like, too. Yeah. It was just yeah, kind of like, they, they seemed like they really wanted to, like they wanted to cast a wider net, which yeah. I thought yeah. was cool. Like, yeah, I thought that know. was appropriate, especially for, you know, it's supposed to be a panel for beginners for JRPGs. It was, it was so. beginning mm -hmm. how to get into JRPGs, like a beginner's guide to JRPGs, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, we spoke about our first JRPG ever, and mine and Brandon's JRPG was the same JRPG, yeah. which was Dragon Warrior 1 for the NES. Oh, mm -hmm. And then Cam spoke about his first RPG, which was Pokemon. Pokemon. And we could tell. I'm in the same boat as Cam. Person in the <laughs> That's room my first. <laughs> <laughs> then we talked a little bit about like Western RPGs versus JRPGs, mm -hmm. how they're different, how they're similar. Um, mm -hmm. and I think we all I'm surprised it went that. that direction, actually. What's that? I'm surprised it went that direction. I that's usually too. kind of, you know, a little bit of a controversial topic at times. It can be divisive, and it, it like in <laughs> ways that I didn't even know. I had people messaging me on Twitter after you know the news about the panel came out and everything, and what we talked about. They're like, "Oh wow, you guys talked like." Was there a lot of was people getting fights? I'm like, no, it was very cordial. Everybody seemed to be on the same page for the most part. Yeah, people just fight on the internet. They don't fight exactly. in real life. Exactly. They don't fight in real life. Yeah. <laughs> the real life versus internet life are two entirely it's, different things. Yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about Western RPGs. I think that, Brandon, you brought up the point that Elden Ring is, even though it's developed in Japan, you said that it's still kind of a Western RPG. I believe that you mentioned that point. That did come up. I think maybe Cam he, he was the one who brought said that, that up. Yeah, and then I yeah then I he, he was talking about kind that. of yeah right because I said mm -hmm. you know it's the same sort of thing with Black Sigil Blade of the Exiled that was right in Canada but it's totally a JRPG based upon you know Chrono Trigger essentially. Um, oh right yeah yeah I remember and then and then I, <laughs> then I had to make the stupid dad joke where I was like you know <laughs> saying a JRPG has to be made in Japan is like saying French toast has to be made in France. That's right. Like that's right. I you know it's that. just it's a good like, analogy. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a style. It's a it's it, it's not it, it does not denote you know point of origin. Yes, I, I still get comments on that all the time. I'm sure you both all do the as time, well. all the time. People always want to fight oh, in the comment section. <laughs> what's Undertale doing on this list? That's not a Japanese role playing game. Oh my gosh! So yeah. I put out a video a couple of weeks ago, and it was like 15 RPGs that I'm really looking forward to, and I just happened to put in. Um, the brand new Zelda game where you control mm -hmm. Princess uh, Zelda. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. 50% of the comments, Zelda isn't an RPG. I'm like, so you can't focus on the other 14 games. Let's all focus on Zelda. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Always the one they want to complain about. Yeah, it's it's They're so nitpicky. Something. It's always something. So then, yeah. um, they asked us a, a question, which actually got me a pretty big round of applause. And that was, how do we review our games? As... <laughs> content creators, as YouTubers, as journalists, how do we review our games? And Emily, you never had a chance to answer this question, so I do want to hear from you. You heard our answers. But yeah. how do you review your games? So I don't do formal reviews on my channel, really. I mostly talk about my experience, and I try to convey um, how I perceived a game, how it made me feel, the fun factor, which I think both of you brought up as well. And because I think when it comes to, down to gaming, like if you have fun with a game, that's what matters the most. Mm -hmm. That's pretty so much right. I, I definitely echo what you both to, said. Yeah, I, I went to. Fun yeah, factor. see, that was the problem. Is David? You should have gone last because uh, yes. you had that that high mountain <laughs> yes. peak moment where everybody's cheering, yes. and then we had to follow it. So <laughs> it's like, well, yes. okay, it was great. Can't, it was can't great. beat that. <laughs> Can't yeah. beat that. But no, like, yeah, basically, like, on my channel, it's basically very similar to, like, it's, I'm, I'm much more focused on vibes, and that's, like, the most important thing to me is mm -hmm. how does this make me feel, like, you know, if it's, it, fun factor is important, but, like, am I having an emotional experience with this game? Yeah. What's the um, atmosphere or all that? That's most important, the atmosphere, yeah, like, like a, a game like Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a story guy, and there's, you can't really say there's a huge story in SMT3, but the vibes of the game are so strong that like I give it I give it a solid score. You know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. I it varies for me a little bit, but um, vibes I would say are with probably Fire the Emblem most too. I think Fire Emblem it's really great at the combat, which generally I lean more towards story. But I love Fire Emblem mm -hmm. so much in the characters that that kind of gets a pass for me. Um, right. In that in that oh, sense. Yeah, it's a lot. I get of fun. that. So yeah. basically, my answer was you know. You could say, I, 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 I was saying, you know, a lot of people want to focus on the graphics. And then you want to say, what's the, is it 30 SPF or is it 60 <laughs> FPS and all this? And I'm like, who cares? Or what's the music like? I'm like, it's a video. You can hear the music. I don't want to talk about it. Like, for me, it's the fun factor. And that's what I said in my answer. It's the fun factor. Like, am I having fun with this game? That's my bottom line. Am I miserable sitting in this chair playing this game? Then the game sucks. Am I having fun? Then the game is great. That's that. That was my answer, and that got me the roaring yeah. round of applause. Yeah, People yeah, throwing yeah, their hats an in the air. And <laughs> 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 then they asked us the next question, which was, "What is our favorite RPG by Nisa?" And I want to say that Cam mm -hmm. answered first, and he said Trails of Azure. Then Brandon, mm -hmm. do you remember what you said? I said Trails of Cold Steel Three. I, I'm second guessing myself so this is an exclusive just to this video um which is probably going to be seen by way more people than were in that panel but um i it might be crystar actually really Christ i surprised I you didn't know. mention that honestly i, I was at, at there. the time I was, I was in such a i was in such a trails mood it was it had been a trails weekend yeah, i guess but like <laughs> i think at the i don't know it's probably crystar okay. and it's all about the vibes thing again you know okay and then i answered my answer which was Alliance Alive. Got another Alliance roaring Alive. round great, of applause for that. Oh, oh it's a fantastic oh, game. Oh, such a good game. But now, Emily, you never got a chance to answer. So what's your yeah. favorite Nisa oh, RPG? Gosh. Putting you on the spot here. Oh, I'm not going to include Trails, even okay. though it's probably Trails. <laughs> well, that, that, that's um, what I did the same thing. I said they both said Trails, so I'm going to exclude Trails. <laughs> and I'm going to go into Alliance Alive. Yeah. Um... They actually, I was really surprised actually, they had, at the start of the panel, they had like maybe 12 different games just mm -hmm. shown that they've worked on publishing. And I was surprised to see mm -hmm. Atelier Ryza on there. So I'm gonna go with Atelier Ryza yeah. too. It's my favorite. That Even though I think it's choice. technically Koei Tecmo, but I think NAS America helped with the publication or vocalization. I actually mm -hmm. really enjoyed the Ryza series, I've gotta say. They're so fun. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's a lot Good of fun. Good vibes there story, too. The story, <laughs> like the Xenoblade kind of open world-ish thing going on. Yeah, yeah. And Lent, I mean, come on, Lent. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, All the about, characters Emily. are so charming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous of you guys. I really want to play it, but I'm one of those, I got to play them in order, and I've got like eight games to get through before I get there, so. Mm. My tip for you, as far as Atelier is yeah. concerned, yeah. skip them. 
go straight to Ryza. <laughs> the reason for especially the earlier ones, like it's like Tatari and all these ones, they have Verona these time limits. And, mm-hmm. and these time mm-hmm. limits are so strict. And it makes it yeah, very like, yeah. gotta follow the guide. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, so they cut you off that, too. That like off. I was, my first Atelier game was Aisha. And I think I was really far in the game. I wanted to do one last thing before I, I wrap it up. But then they're like, nope, time's up. Yep. <laughs> you it can't literally, do whatever this one area yep, you're is. You're done. Bye. Like, great. Stop having fun. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah like I was like, I was so straight. disappointed when that happened. I was like, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to do. Yeah. But so. um, yeah, I think Rise is great. Um, also, Sophie 2 is supposed mm-hmm. to be like one of the pinnacles, too. But it's a, one of the more modern titles. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm really curious. If we're gonna have a new um, console game this year announced by them, I hope so because mm. I I can't really get with the gotcha stuff. They've been doing it's. It seems like they're releasing one Atelier per year lately, so it's been pretty it wouldn't consistent. surprise me if they do. Um, I, 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 I've got to say, kind of like we, me and I, I think all three of us actually agree that Trails Through Daybreak is actually a pretty decent starting point. Yeah, Sky is best, but Trails Through Daybreak is a pretty decent starting point. And you could say the same thing about Atelier Riza. It's a pretty decent (laughs) starting point. And if you really like it, then go back and check out the other games. Yeah, yeah. I I, I totally 100% agree with that. Yeah. The final thing that they asked us about was Raynatus. They introduced uh, the game. We all played the demo. They asked us our feelings on the demo. We all talked about that. Just, you know, we didn't get a chance to play for that long. 10 minutes, I would imagine, was the demo length. But it's a fun little yeah. game, you know? So we spoke about that. Then the panel um, ended. It was roughly 45 minutes or so, the panel. Mm-hmm. And then it was my favorite part of the panel, when people lined up to say hello to me and take mm. pictures and all that kind of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, I had a really good time meeting so many of y'all right there. I know that, Brandon, you met a lot of people as well. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Well, it's, it's it makes a lot of sense. Like you know, I think, and I don't know if this was uh, consistent for you across the whole con, Emily. But it seemed like when I got recognized and when you got recognized, it was like around trails related or NIS America related stuff, and that makes sense, right? Because like our audience is going to be kind of gathering around those those places so yeah. um yeah so it was great like people coming up to talk about games and asking for recommendations i had this it was like the sweetest thing that's ever happened to me this little girl i don't know how old she was because i can't i can't tell how old <laughs> kids are eight or nine year old little girl comes up with her dad and she wanted to ask me a question and she's like and i'm like what sweetie i can't hear you so i'm like trying to listen and she wanted to know basically if Genshin Impact was a JRPG. Mm. And I was like, sure it was. And she like validated her, you know, her Aww. interest or whatever. And it was just like, that's so sweet. That's like, that's cute. awesome. That's yeah. Horrible. So yeah, it was a ton of fun. And then afterwards they kicked us out of the panel room. Yeah. Um, like, we and we like, just kept get having... out, get out. They were ushering us out. Yeah. And then even people when were, we got out were... of the panel room, we're like standing there still talking to some people. And they're like, no, move over here. We were like across the hallway. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but like I had a lot of people that I talked to. And I had a mm-hmm. flight that I had to catch um, at around, I think my flight was at like seven because somewhere yeah. during that day, Ken was like, hey, I found an earlier flight. Do you want to come back? It was 4th of July weekend. And there was this 4th right. of July party going on that I really wanted to go to. So I'm like, yeah, sure, you can book that. So that's why I was like, gotta go. So <laughs> so, <laughs> so you guys stayed for the for the rest of the day, right? Yeah. Or was there yeah, any other panels dinner. or anything going on after that? Anything else that you guys did? Panels, no, but we went to an authentic Mexican restaurant. I nice. wanted Jen and Brandon to experience that. Nice. They're from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, our waitress yep. spoke only Spanish. My, my friend Ellie, she's fluent in Spanish, so um, yeah, it was it was a fun experience and interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think that the whole Anime Expo was really just a blast. It was a joy to go to, yes. and I've got to say this: whenever I was first invited to an Anime Expo, I thought to myself, "Oh my God, I like I'm gonna get caught." <laughs> Like, people are going to say, like, <laughs> what animes do you watch, David? And I'm going to be like, oh, I watched Sailor Moon whenever I was in high I'm school in 1996. <laughs> you know? That's a classic. <laughs> it's a classic, but it's like, that's all I really got. You know, when I watched Avatar, right. The Last Airbender, um, and I watched a little bit of Dragon Quest Adventure of Die whenever that game came out. And that's about it. Mm-hmm. But, and yes, there was plenty of anime stuff there. But I really felt like it was whatever you wanted it to be. If you wanted it to totally. be anime, there was anime. If you wanted it to be video games, there was video games. There was so much stuff there. It was really just it was. a great experience. 
Yeah. Yeah, my I friend doesn't watch anime, play JRPGs, but she really loves this Chinese series, and they are well re- represented there. So I was like, perfect. She, perfect. I'll get to yeah. go to these things with her, so she doesn't feel too left out. <laughs> yeah. um, there's really, I think, just so much variety there. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it was yeah. really way more JRPG show. representation than I ever would have thought. Same. And I guess in Same. retrospect, it's like it makes sense. There's a lot yeah. of crossover in that audience. But like, yeah. yeah, I mean, the the big companies were all represented there. And we got to talk. I think, David, like you said at the beginning, we got to talk to reps from mm-hmm. a bunch of those different companies. And that was just cool to get to meet people. And yeah. it was yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And those kind of two hours that we had before the panel started, I was going I was bolting around from from um, from game company to game company to game company. Hi, I'm David. I run the channel David Vink, you know. Meet me. Yeah, you did a good job networking. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it yeah, was I was good. taking notes. I was taking notes. It's on like, okay, this is how you do it. Yeah, it was pretty much like, hey, you, me, let's go. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was great to meet both of you as well, and I'm glad that you guys had a great time at the Anime Expo, and I hope that this video has helped all of y'all understand just what it's like to, number one, run a panel, Number two, go to one of these expos. And number three, just kind of like experience what it's like to kind of like see see it in like, you know, somebody else's shoes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it was really yeah. just And they're actually blast. JRPG fans, you know, in real life. Yeah. That's so validating. Right. Because, <laughs> right. you, you you know, you talk about JRPGs, your friends, you know, and they're like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but this was great. You actually got to meet other, you know, fans of, of what we love. So, yeah. validating is the validating is the right word because like like I started just the gems because I wanted to find people that like JRPGs and it's like through doing that like now I'm going to anime expo and I'm meeting so many people just like so many people that like the same stuff that I like yeah. and I've never had that in exactly. the 40 years that I've been alive it's crazy yeah it is it's just it's really a magical experience, and I would highly recommend that if any of you ever have the opportunity to attend an expo or go to anything like this, that you do so, because it really is a life-changing opportunity. So thank you so much for joining me on my channel, Emily and Brandon. I had a great time, and thank y'all so much for watching. Have a good day. <laughs>